Hello, Brent Gedgen here, Live Oak Dermatology. Today we're talking about one of my favorite medications called spironolactone for adult female hormonal acne. First, what is adult female hormonal acne? As opposed to the kind of acne when we have when we're teenagers with the blackheads and the whiteheads favoring the forehead, this is a slightly different acne uh, with a slightly different character. It tends to favor the lower face, the jawline. It tends to be cyclical, uh, worse with the periods. Often feels like it's arising from underneath the surface. Uh, people can have this for the first time in adulthood, or it could be someone who's dealt with acne their entire life. It just sort of changes qualities as, as they get older. Um, it's a very frustrating kind of acne to treat. If you've had it, you know exactly what I mean. Oftentimes, the topicals would use for traditional acne they fall short of our expectations or the results are a bit underwhelming. So spironolactone is, is a wonderful weapon in that, in that situation. Um, for hormonal acne, birth control is a traditional treatment. It is absolutely on the table and can be helpful for acne, but there are some downsides to, to using birth control. Some people aren't medical candidates, perhaps due to clotting risk, perhaps due to age or comorbidities. Uh, so spironolactone offers an opportunity to, to provide some of the similar benefits and, and even more uh, without those same risks. So what is spironolactone? Spironolactone was developed as a diuretic, which is a type of blood pressure pill. And I know that's an odd thing to be discussing in a dermatologist office, but uh, this medicine also is a potent androgen blocker. And it's the androgen hormone, uh, male hormone that females have too, that promotes the cystic breakout. So by taking this medicine, we're able to suppress its effect uh, on the face and, and eliminate or, or greatly reduce the number of these cystic breakouts that occur. Like any medicine, there are potential side effects. Uh, this one is no different. Because of its main design as a diuretic or a blood pressure pill, theoretically you could have a light dizziness, uh, lightheadedness. Um, you can get electro electrolyte disturbances such as elevated potassium. Uh, you're at greater risk that if you're taking other supplements containing potassium or if you have kidney issues requiring certain antihypertensive medicines like ACE inhibitors. Um, in those situations, we'd want to monitor very closely or consider switching to some alternative medications. Uh, historically, we used to check potassium fairly regularly uh, just to make sure you weren't getting dangerous elevations. Um, this is not done quite as commonly these days because the incidence of, of problems in young, healthy adults is quite low. Um, if you have other problems such as high blood pressure or you're over the age of 40, we may still want to monitor that potassium level moving forward. Additionally, you can have side effects related to the hormone effect of the medicine. So you can have issues such as menstrual irregularities. Those are usually reduced or mitigated if you're also on a contraceptive pill. you must not become pregnant while on this medicine. It's not of the same severity or concern that it would be if you were on Accutane, for instance, where you get birth defects, but because this is an androgen blocker that could interfere with development of say a male fetus if you were to become pregnant. So uh, same restrictions aren't required as for Accutane, but if you're planning on starting a family or you find out you're pregnant, you must stop this medicine right away. So how does the treatment work? What we'll usually do is start at a lower dose, perhaps 50 milligrams twice a day. If you have a tendency towards lightheadedness or some other risk factors, we may start even lower than that. It takes some time for this medicine to work. It takes about two or three months before you start to see meaningful benefits. The goal is to get you clear, to clear up your face, to allow some of these old blemishes and scars to resolve, to fade away. After about four or five months of really good control, when you're pleased, at that point, we often will try to titrate down, try to titrate down in dosage very slowly to see if we can find the lowest effective dosage. For some people, we're able to titrate or taper all the way off. And it was just a weird, point, a weird period of their life where they're having these issues and now that it's resolved, so has their acne. For others, those same hormonal imbalances persist and so uh, we end up taking this medicine for a more prolonged duration. Uh, this medicine is considered safe for long-term use there used to be some concern, uh, as there is for pro-estrogen medications, such as contraceptive pills, that over long periods of time, that may increase your risk of breast cancer as it does for contraceptive pills. 
So they've done some exhaustive studies and, and have not shown a similar correlation with this product. Nevertheless, if you do have a breast cancer, personal breast cancer history, I will often defer to your, your oncologist uh, whether or not you're a good candidate for this medicine. It's one of my favorite, favorite weapons against adult hormonally induced acne, and uh, it can really provide relief where many, many countless options have failed historically. So if you think you might be a good candidate, then talk to your dermatologist.